Let me introduce our presenter for today, uh, John Batten. John is president of New Hampshire Industries, a company that he has worked for for more than 22 years. Uh, he served in a number of roles uh, during that time from technician to quality manager, general manager, director of operations, and now president. So John, thanks so much for uh, being here with us and I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, this was a good exercise for me to kind of put together uh, in order what we've gone through so far. We're we're you know we're about a year in a year and a half into our lean transformation here um, since I took over. Uh, that's been a focus of mine. So I'm going to start with a little bit of an introduction um, of NHI. Just um, I don't want to put a plug in. We're we're an OEM manufacturer, um, so we don't sell to the public, but I think it instructs a little bit of where we're coming from, um, and I, and then where Kata fit in to our, um, you know, where Kata fit into our process, as well as the the four key lessons that I've taken away thus far, and it's instructed um, where we're going to go from here. So New Hampshire Industries was a company founded in in the 1960s, actually in 1960, um, and it was spun off from a bearing company. Um, and we, we made basically idler pulleys for outdoor power equipment. Um, there were several acquisitions throughout the years um, of smaller competitors, and um, we basically operated them as standalone units until we were able to um, start a facility consolidation in, in 2016 here in New Hampshire. Um, the main headquarters was already in New Hampshire, but it was in a much smaller site, and it wasn't laid out properly. It was really tough to move around. Um, material handling was tough. So when we got this new building, um, it was a good opportunity for us to do a, an improved layout with a much safer facility uh, and then start our, our lean transformation on the um, rest of the businesses that we brought into um, New Hampshire from the other standalone sites. The real reason that I was focused on um, on lean or lean, you know, continuous improvement was um, as I moved up through the organization and, and really landed in quality for most of my early career, um, we relied on a very seasoned workforce, mature products and processes. So not a lot of things changed. So it was real easy to kind of maintain the status quo. But um, shortly after I started with the company in, in the uh, mid nineties, uh, we started to see a lot of pressure from low cost countries. Um, the, the type of product we make is considered a commodity product in, in the OEM world because it's something that they can buy obviously from all around the world. Um, and we did start to, to lose business. And at that time we did not embrace change well because of that seasoned workforce and really mature processes. So it was really, there was a resistance to changing. Um, and like the slide says, I call it the NHI, the NAI, NAIH effect, um, which is not invented here because everybody would walk around and say, oh, we've always done it that way. We make, you know, we make good money doing that. So there's really no need. So one of my main focuses when I was going to take over as president was I was going to make sure that at the top level, we had support for uh, lean transformation. Um, we started little by little um, back before I took over with 5S and things like that, but they never stuck. So I put, you know, a plan together to begin training on all the tools we were going to need. And you know, basically really was a heavy focus on, on operational excellence and all the things that other companies had done to achieve that or, or move toward their way. So there was, you know, the, the normal things like value stream mapping, 6S, uh, 5S, 6S, whatever you call it, inventory, uh, improvement and consolidation, setup reduction, all the key areas uh, and tools that have been developed over the years to really work on operational excellence. Um, and I figured if all these companies um, and experts do this, why why should I do something different? Let's just make sure that we have a good plan to teach and implement these tools throughout the organization. Uh, and, and I thought, how can it go wrong? You know, and that, as long as we have top management support and all these tools, we should be, you know, we should be in a very, very good place. So I have a, my Lean Six Sigma black belt, and one of the things that I, it's fraught with tools, right? There's tools all over the place, and um, I've never had a great opportunity to, to use them. So we started out with that, that really nice timeline plan to teach these tools, but it quickly became evident that those are other people's tools, um, 
and and our problems we were trying to apply them to and it really didn't work well um at first it really uh people were confused they were just going through the motions because that's what the you know that's what the process was but they didn't necessarily see the value um because it really wasn't addressing our issues um because every company really is um an individual you can't just look at yourself as toyota and just cookie cutter those tools in and think it's going to work that way so you got to have the right tool for the right problem um and at that time i read the book toyota kata by mike rother and it really hit me like a like a an epiphany that um here's here's a process or a pattern that you can apply in your company that will let you um address or bring in the the, the proper tools to address the obstacles that you uncover on your way to your challenges and um, that was really eye-opening to me unfortunately i was already six months to a year into the the lean transformation and i felt like i'd be taking a, a a kind of a 180 with the team if i changed things but i then attended a twi institute the toyota kata 10-hour uh, training program and then subsequently the 40-hour program a few months later and I was convinced at that point that this was the, the right way to go for the organization to um, to be able to solve their own problems and use and create tools by following the pattern of the improvement kata and the coaching kata. So the I, I broke down the lessons that I, I've learned thus far or we have learned thus far um, into four different lessons. Um, the first one is authority alone does not compel an organization to improve or change. Um, I thought from my quality background that if I supported everything with top management support, unlike some of my predecessors, that um, we would be successful. And unfortunately, I misunderstood uh, or underestimated what, what the leadership position takes um, as far as guiding the company. Top management support alone doesn't is not enough by itself. Um, you've got to you've got to make sure that there's a compelling reason to change. So really. Uh, global competition and our, our our lost business really became the focal point um, and top management support was there to support that, but it wasn't the guiding principle. Um, the other thing that I learned is it, the more involved I got because I was a practitioner for years and then moved into the leadership position that I was providing what I thought was guidance and all the people who work on the floor who see me as the president um, heard mandates. They They didn't take them as guidance. They took them as well, he must have the answer, so therefore I'm just going to go do what he's what he's bringing up. So I had to back off and, and really take a, a different look at my approach and my position and where I fit. Um, and then again, people focused on what they thought I wanted to hear um, versus what they needed to do to address their obstacles. So that was a pretty um, a pretty reflective lesson for me to have to, to 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 take because I thought I was providing a lot of support and guidance and and it really was being um, viewed as dictatorial almost and and really uh, not giving them any freedom to solve their own issues and identify their own issues. So the second lesson uh, that really stuck out was um, setting challenges. You need to know what makes a good challenge for your company. Um, I read uh, the participants guide or the practice guide for Toyota Kata and I started to apply um, what Mike Rother lays out as the um, um, process analysis um, portion of that and I basically wanted to set challenges that said we need to meet our customers um, we need to meet our customers requirements so that we the first challenges need to be set by the plan cycle time what do we need to hit in order to satisfy our customers um, but the way it was worded um, it, it made it it made it almost unachievable, even though it was what we needed to get at. It always felt like they were failing. Um, current condition uh, was nowhere close to the plan cycle time, and the people felt like even though I was communicating and the other coaches were communicating that where we are is not good or bad, they still felt like they were failing. So they 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 would come in and and they just felt demoralized from the start. So it wasn't a good place to kick off um, the you know the Toyota Kata. Um, because at, at that point they really should be empowered not not demotivated so that was a, another key lesson that that we had learned and um that we need to needed to address with some action items the third 
real key lesson was grasping the current condition is not easy. And anybody who doesn't um, necessarily know or, or have any background in kata, current condition is just where you are, right? Where you are today, and it's and it's and it's again not good or bad. It's where just where you are. But there's one thing that I learned: um, people don't understand necessarily what data is telling them as easily as somebody who's worked in quality for 20 years or in engineering or or in a technical position that are used to dealing with data. And and it and the the common sense approach that I was putting out there with the um, process analysis was laying out these charts and graphs and good data, but um, if you don't understand what the data is telling you, uh, it's really difficult for people to grasp that current condition themselves, the learners, um, and not just not just the coaches. Um, and then the early coaching missed the opportunity to to really ensure scientific thinking was going on at the improvement cotta level. Um, the the coaches that I launched with um, were so focused on on following the pattern of the five questions that that are part of the coaching kata. Um, they really were missing opportunities on coaching um, the improvement kata to happen and getting people to really look at their target condition and understand their current condition and how they're going to get from there to their target condition and identifying obstacles and all the things that that come into play with with Toyota Kata, really the coaches missed the opportunity. They were they were really robotic in following the process and really not seeing those coaching opportunities, including myself. Um, and and uh, that was something we missed early on. Uh, that was um, a pretty pretty painful lesson because we had to go back again and 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 restart some of those um, early Kata um, boards. But but um, it still nonetheless was a lesson that we had to learn and. And all learning is good. So, um, you know, in lesson four is pace setting is hard. And what I mean by that is, at the, as the president, I have it. I had that product, that project plan that I wanted to achieve. Um, you know, world class manufacturing um, facility by um, three to five years, and I followed the the typical Toyota, you know, production system launch site, you know, cycle, and I thought we had it all set, but. At the end of the day, you can't change a culture at the rate you want. I can set a goal, but at the the, the organization is only going to be able to stand a certain amount of change at a time. And leader, leadership can have that goal, but can't force it. And it's it's really more like I have to view it as the president as looking like I'm pressing on the accelerator of a vehicle, and I need to keep even pressure to keep you know to keep moving forward, moving forward, but. Um, I can't just step on the gas all at once. Um, it will overwhelm the system and the culture will 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 push back. And um, so if it, 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 my team was overwhelmed, um, the pace setting I was putting out there, although I viewed it as reasonable and achievable, they felt like it was um, beyond what they could actually change in the pace that I was trying to set. Um, and then the other thing I needed to learn personally was sometimes it's hard to see and recognize how much you've already improved. Uh, one of the things we see on the boards is uh, the Kata boards is, you know, how many target conditions have we hit or, you know, what target conditions have we met? And, you know, you, you see that current one, but if you don't take time to look back and actually see where you started from, um, which is part of the, the, the pattern of Kata too, is look back and see what you've improved versus you know, trying to set out this this hard project plan because um, you need to you need to recognize the team and that's part of respect for people and and I missed that opportunity early on um, and personally felt like we weren't going as as far and as fast as we could and uh, again another demotivator not intended to be but um, it it turned out to be that way. So based on all that learning, um, I put together kind of, if anybody uh, knows Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I kind of did the same thing with the steps we needed to take in, uh, in order to get us back on track and really start moving forward. So first thing is clearer, more appropriate challenges, making sure people, they're, they're what the, co the company needs to support our business needs, but it's they're clearer and more appropriate to make people feel like um, they're achievable and they feel good about where they are according to that um, challenge. Coaching scientific thinking is the second thing after we have the challenges. We want to make sure that we're coaching scientific thinking. We're not just following the pattern so so parochially that we're not um, we're missing opportunities to coach the learners. And that goes for beyond Kata. Any any improvement you know pro process needs to have scientific thinking going on. You know data analysis, all sorts of other things. So we need to be coaching that. 
uh, throughout the organization to really help push that culture change. Um, celebrate the failed experiments and learning. So, you know, part of the 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 look back for Kata is understanding what what you learned, whether you whether your experiment was successful or or considered a quote unquote failure. Um, but celebrate the failed ones. It, it's, it, it recognizes a step forward, an, an attempt at trying to overcome an obstacle instead of just standing pat and, and staying, you know, where you currently are. And then make sure I'm steady on the accelerator through all that as the leader, making sure I'm applying that steady pressure on the on the gas pedal per se, to make sure that, um, and I have a good feel for the pulse of the organization that that's gonna be acceptable and, and we can keep the culture change going at that rate. Still challenging the organization to change at, a, at, at maybe at the edge of a comfort level, but not not being herky-jerky on the, on the um, accelerator. You know, and then it's really using Kata to learn solutions to our problems. At the end of the day, that was, you know, I go back to, we, we focused on tools, um, tools, 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 and more tools. Um, and really, you know, this four-step part of the improvement Kata really is the epiphany that, that I need to kind of keep my mind straight. You know, you need to understand the direction. That's my job as the, as the president. And then beyond that, I need to, I need to really help the organization get through steps two, three, and four of the, of the improvement Kata and, and with the help of the coaches, right? So understand the direction I set that. They need to understand it clearly. Um, they need to be very clear on their current condition, which takes into account all the data analysis, all the other things that um, you that seem to be common sense. You have to make sure that you're, you're coaching and helping those learners understand that that data is there to help them understand where they're at, um, where they're currently at, and um, so that they can then set that next target condition. Um, the key there is that gray area that's on that poster is that that's the, you know, the gray zone or the unknown zone. And you can't have a project plan to get through there. And I've, I've, I've argued this with people who are project management experts, you know, that's an area you've never been before. So you cannot have a step-by-step -step project plan to get you through there. You have to take a step, experiment toward that target condition, understand what you know your obstacles are that are in your way and address them as they come up. You can't, you can't predict that. So being okay with that and embracing that uh, within the organization is really part of the, the biggest challenge of both the coach and the learner and the leader who's setting the, the challenge. So um, that's something that you know, as we go forward over the next year, uh, we'll be really focusing on this model to really make sure that it's all working within a, a you know, a nice, uh, predictable, and uh, I won't say predictable, but a nice, manageable um, pace of change. Uh, because at, at the end of the day, if they know they can get to their challenge by their due date, their by when date, then really that's the pace of change. They've got to determine how many target conditions they need to meet, what they need to do to get there, and then the coach has to help them get there uh, as well. So this is a really, I know this is a short, um, program. I didn't have a lot of time. Um, I, I One thing I'd leave you with is I have to go back to this. This is one thing I do in my mind a lot is it's a marathon and not a sprint. I am a tend to be a sprinter type um, in a personal work, in my personal work. But as a leader, I had to learn that, you know, it, it is a marathon. You need to keep the, the goal in sight, but you need to you need to understand that you're not the only person that's uh, making this change happen. You got to do it within the, you know, the confines of your team. And, and have respect for people's differences and their different um, appetite for change and learning new things. Because once they get it, obviously you've heard all the good stories that come along with a lot of lean transitions and transformations. Once they get it and that grassroots effort starts to burn from the, bot, you know, from the bottom of the organization up, that's, that's how it's sustainable, that's how it's powerful, and that's where you, know, you get your, you know, your huge change. It's not coming from the top, it's, it's, it's really coming from the from the grassroots of the organization.